Uh, so this talk is called You Deserve Unicode TLA Plus. Sorry, it's not working? It's good. Okay, we're good. Let's get it closer. All right, there we go. We can restart the talk maybe. There we go. Okay, how about this? Okay, so you deserve TLA plus, and you, you deserve Unicode TLA plus and other nice things too. Uh, my name is Andrew Helwer, as I was just introduced. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about during this quick talk. Uh, feature announcement, Unicode support in the Java tools. I'll go over what that means, what still needs to be done. Uh, I'm going to go over what it's like to actually contribute to the core tools. Open source software is, has its difficulties compared to corporate software, and I'll kind of go over that sort of transition. And also the future, uh, what this work that I did unlocks for what we can do with the foundation going forward evolving the language. And here's the feature announcements. Uh, you can go right now to the TLA Plus releases, download the latest tools, it will parse Unicode TLA Plus. It, it does it. It's the, it got merged last week. Hey! And you might be asking, okay, great, uh, how do I actually type it? Like, do I have to memorize all the codes and like type them in, or do I have to get like one of those fancy keyboards with extra symbols? You can do that if you want, but actually the standard way that this is being done these days by all the Matthew languages like Lean is they have their editor plugins for whatever various editors that replace the text as you type. So if you type like backslash union and then press a space or something, it'll like replace it with a nice cup. Uh, I've written this already for NeoVim because I use NeoVim and I did a whole contract with it um, working on TLA spec professionally and it worked really well. So it's been dog fooded and whatever. Um, I hope to add this feature to the VS Code extension soon. And I think Ron Pressler had this working for the toolbox back in 2016. I think it got like taken out because it broke some stuff, but maybe we could like raise it from the dead if we wanted to add it to the toolbox. Uh, I also wrote a tool called TLOC or TLA Unicode Converter, which can ex uh, convert your existing ASCII specs into their beautiful Unicode equivalents. Uh, you can just go to that place and download it. It's a nice command line tool. And the PlusCal translator support is pending in a pull request. I say pending as though I'm waiting on Marcus to review, but actually it's failing a test right now, so I'd have to fix it a tiny bit more before it's good to go. But it's out there, it's published, so if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, someone else can probably finish it. Uh, so how does it look? Here's how it looks. This is from specifying systems. Uh, an example, you see here we got like the uh, like set membership operator, we got the reels, you have like your upside down A, like for all this, for all that, there exists this, etc, etc, etc. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, hopefully you think it looks great too. And here's a quick demo of what it looks like to write TLA plus Unicode with like an editor extension. This is just me recording a stream, uh, a session in NeoVim. So you see how it's replaced like as you type. Um, I, I actually typed extremely slowly and then like sped up the recording. I, I'm not actually that precise. So that's what it looks like. Uh, so work still to be done here. Uh, the TLA plus proof system parser, it uses its own parser. Uh, it does not yet support Unicode. And actually, as part of this work, which I might talk about a bit later on, depending on time, I made this gigantic unified parser corpus of input TLA plus snippets and expected parse tree formats that uh, now SANI and the tree Center grammar both have this kind of like same test suite that they use, which I think is really cool. And I want to onboard the TLA PM parser to that too. Uh, I would like the plus Cal translator to emit Unicode in addition to parsing it. Right now it'll like parse your Unicode input and just emit the ASCII like normal. Um, TLA2 tech, I know that academics use this when they use TLA plus in their papers, so it would be nice to support that. And also as you type conversion extensions for additional editors like VS Code, Toolbox, Emacs, um, this is a place where I would actually really like help from any of you. Uh, I wrote the extension for NeoVim because I use NeoVim. If you use an editor that you really like and you want just like a nice contained project you can probably bang out in a weekend, this would be an excellent uh, opportunity to contribute. Um, I honestly don't like writing these too much and I don't know TypeScript, so if anyone could write the VS Code thing instead of me, I would love that. 
Uh, you can look at the lean VS Code extension for an example of how they do text replacement. Um, anyway, OK. Let's talk about the experience of contributing to the TLA Plus tools. Uh, the feature announcement is fun, but I think this is the real meat of the presentation because um, it was interesting going from being a corporate software developer to kind of operating in the free software space in the spirit of this being the open source software conference. Uh, we can talk about this. So development in open source, it offers social problems basically to equal technical problems. And the dynamic is just very different from when you're working on in-house corporate software projects. Uh, many of us, we come from that world where you are rewarded in companies for, I guess you would call it like taking ownership of projects and like generating big changes, bat like banging out features, making like lots and lots of noise and, and all that stuff, right? And the reason that that works in a corporate setting is because if things break, your manager can like give you a talking to or something, or like you don't get your yearly raise or something. You know, there's like a, a feedback loop, right? Versus in free software, if you're sub submitting a change to a project and it breaks everything, like they can't really come back and like ask you to fix all the bugs you introduced. There's no like necessary on necessarily like ongoing relationship. So the dynamic is very different and you have to approach free software a bit differently in that world. And this is all compounded by like the current state of the Java code, which it's was written about 25 years ago. Large amounts of the code base are untouched. It has scattershot unit test coverage. Like some parts are really well tested, other parts are not tested at all. It has a lot of global static state, which makes it hard to write tests because the code you're trying to set up to test actually requires you to have initialized something that's way over here, and it, it, it's a whole thing. Um, so it has a lot of challenges. Like it works really well, but it, you know it has challenges working on it. So this is my perception of how to contribute to the tools. I found this worked for me. This is not necessarily like the way it should be. This is the way it is. You know, these are all like human constructs. We can change them. But the name of the game is basically be very surgical with any change that you're trying to make to the TLA tools. It kind of think of it like code golf a bit. Like what is the smallest number of lines I would have to change or make the smallest smallest diff I could make to like make the feature that I wanted work work. And if you can split up a pull request, then you like split it up. You know, like um, for example, I had a pull request that Marcus asked. I like moved all these like. Uh, continuous, integration change, continuous integration changes out into their own pull request so that you could like realize the benefits of them without having to like take the entire thing all at once. Um, and then also, of course, build consensus on the need for some change before spending like a month working on it and then submitting it and then like maybe not having it be as received as well as you want. Um, this can be done like you either like open an issue or the monthly community calls are like a great place to do this. Like ask people what they think. Uh, also, write lots and lots of tests. I said that writing tests is hard. It is hard. I, the, I've been working on this specific feature for the past two and a half months directly, and more or less the past three years very indirectly. And probably the majority of that time was spent writing tests. Um, it, it's hard to write tests, but basically you, you, we are changing code that hasn't been changed in 25 years. We don't know what's all going to happen, so I think um, and this, this pays dividends, right? Like when we want to change it in the future, it's a lot easier. So that, that was my experience of a successful way of contributing a fairly major feature to something way down the stack in the TLA tools, if you've all ever been interested in that. OK, let's talk about how this work was funded, because I talk about all this stuff. Um, basically, I worked on my savings. I don't have a contract right now, which is a fancy word of way to say I'm unemployed. And eventually, since living in the US is fairly expensive, I, my bank account gets low enough that I'm, I'm maybe like, uh, I don't know, you know? So, so far, at least for the past three years, I've managed to like squeak out. I get like some contract or another, and I work for like, you know, three, four months on something or other, and that like replenishes my savings enough that it can go back to my happy place of working on all these wonderful features for you. So, if you, uh, maybe know your company wants someone to write a TLA plus spec or various other things I can do. Like I'm quite good with like Z3 or lean or other formal methods, analyzing distributed systems. 
maybe uh, say, hey, there's this guy, you know, we could hire him. He comes with pretty good recommendations. And then you get a, this sort of like virtual cycle, keep, you know, keep it going. I, you get your spec or whatever you want. I get the money and then the TLA plus people get their features. <laughs> it works pretty well. Anyway, so you can email consulting at disjunctive.llc if you're interested in that. Okay, now let's talk about what this work I've done has brought us to uh, as far as where we can go for the future. Because of all the tests I wrote, the parser, like the lowest level of the Java tools, went from like almost no coverage to, in my opinion, the best tested part of the entire Java tools, which means we can very confidently make changes to it. Uh, at this point, we have kind of like regained control of it. It was this like mythical beast off doing, and we couldn't even touch it. Like whenever a, a parser bug was reported, people are like, "Oh yeah, that sucks." Um, but now we can actually like fix those, and we can like make new language features. We have the RFC process, um, and we can actually like implement those RFCs like tangibly. And so here's a simple suggestion: I would like to combine the set map and set filter operation. I always find me myself like doing these together. And it's really annoying to have to write like a nested map inside a filter. Um, I really like Python list comprehensions, which is generally my sort of uh, inspiration here. And fundamentally, I would like sets to be as pleasant to use as functions, because I always find myself using functions instead of sets, which is annoying, because then you need to define like a null value if like the function input is mapping to something that doesn't yet exist in the set. And yeah, anyway, so that, there's, there's my idea. And I would like to just, at this point, open it up to the rest of you. What, what, I don't know, what would you like to see? How would you like to see the TLA plus language evolve? And with that, um, I will close the talk. Who goes first? Okay, I have a question. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. So you mentioned that, you know, it's this big mass of, of Java code that's kind of hard to, to evolve. Um, what is the biggest obstacle that could be addressed that would make your life easier? Mm, like me personally or like the project? Why not answer both? Okay, me personally would be money. Uh, so like just having like the, the time to just, you know, sit there and like slowly evolve this project as it needs to go so that we get to a point where we're like, we're happy with the code base. Uh, the biggest obstacle for the project, that's a hard question. I mean, a year ago, I thought the answer was the fact that like the tools themselves were just like not in a state that could eventually be remediated and even I didn't really like Java very much. So I started writing a, the, a version of the tools in Rust, but kind of burned out on that a bit. So I, I do think like Mark Brooker mentioned that like the language tooling support is not as good as like a lot of other languages are. I think that probably would be number one. And that ties into really improving the parsers, like error reporting, parsing speed, things of this nature uh, would be my answer, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't necessarily have an answer to that, just an extension. The, uh, to the second question, the answer is also money. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> there are right now three people working on the TLA plus code base, which is Kelvin, Andrew, and me. You know, everything Andrew writes gets reviewed by Kelvin or me. And at the end of the day, that's constrained by our pipelines here. And we have a day job. Um, Microsoft and Oracle probably, too, doesn't really pay and to review pull requests. So we have to be very conscious about the parts we work on unless we get more funding and more eyes to review pull requests and get features in, yeah. And if we get contributions, like Andrew said, we make sure that the person who proposes them has the stunning to see them through, right? Because we can't, it's a waste of time if, it, if it's only get halfway done and we have to revert it. And that has happened a couple of times in the past. So we are probably more cautious than most other open source projects. So I think that one of the takeaways there is that there is an opportunity for folks to get involved on an individual level, um, on a company level. See also that you can join the foundation. Um, 
and help us continue the, the great work that these folks are doing um, in TLA Plus. Oh, we've got. So you mentioned in the one of the slides if you can split the pull request, split it, yeah? So mm -hmm. how many pull requests you created approximately to bring the Unicode? Oh, that's a good question. So within the past two and a half months, I would say it's probably four or five, do you think so? Add another two for plus Cal, which are pending. Um, but uh, I did mention kind of obliquely that I've been sort of working on this in a uh, yak shaving way for the past three years. Like for example, over the past year and a half, I've done a bunch of work on the TLA plus examples repo to turn it into like a really effective corpus of tests for the tools. Which, if you have, if you want to, an easy way to contribute to the the whole project, by the way, is if you have specs, please contribute to them to the examples repo. Because like every spec you add is the same as like adding like, oh, I don't know, like ten tests to the tools, pretty much. Like we we run it through a lot of stuff to try to like wring all the value we can out of every single spec. Um, so like that's another example. And then like all the tree sitter grammar that I wrote, which I presented here back in 2021, and other things like that. Who knows, at that point, the number of pull requests. Uh, this is a question maybe more for just TLA plus maintainers in general, but you know, like I'm, I'm at a university, we have a bunch of students who are, would may, exactly, they would be happy to contribute, but you know, I, I don't think they're the kind of people who would like see through complex changes, right? To, to an artifact that's really complex in order to understand. So, you know, the, there's a flip side to it, which is if you make some issues available that are like actually low barrier to entry or like really easy to get started with, right? Those might be those might be really handy for for involving, you know, like undergraduate students, for example. And, you know, I'm sure there's professors all over the place, you know, who, who would be happy to point students to these kinds of things if 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 there's like a pathway for them. Counterintuitively one of the pieces of advice I tend to give open source projects is don't fix the easy bugs. Let those, let those hang out for a bit um, to, to give people an easy win. Um, but yes, anybody else with ideas or features they would like to see? Who here would like to make their first pull request to, to a TLA plus related repository hey. okay we've got potential contributors hey awesome well, I, sh I should also mention if you're interested in the specific symbols uh that we use or choose for each math thing um i mean that's i chose them uh marcus helped a bit but like you know if you have alternative ideas you can bring them up and there's something called the tla plus standards repo uh, Marcus also brought up using like, I think it looks like, it looks like a capital T and then like a lower T for true and false. Um, mm -hmm. And people might find that a bit alienating. I don't know, it's hard to say, but yeah, things like that. Andrew, would you be interested, so we've got two people who, mm -hmm. are, who are interested in contributing. Mm -hmm. um, would you be interested in potentially mentoring them through their contributions? Sure. Yeah, I, uh, as part of my testing, I found a whole bunch of like bugs in the parser, which I just mentioned is very well tested, so you can confidently change it and like maybe fix a couple of those small parser bugs. This is a great feedback cycle. I think we've, we've just solved the pro some of the problem here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Who's gonna write their next spec in Unicode TLA plus? All right, great. Next time I come to the conference next year, I want all your examples to be in Unicode. That's what I want to see. Yes. Are the Unicode specs backwards compatible or vice versa? Like, or is it a one-way change? Oh no. So you can use yeah, you can use the the T lock tool, T the Unicode conversion tool to go back and forth. It, it, it's, it works quite well, I, it's pretty bulletproof. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as backward compatibility, as long as you don't use a version of the tools older than like three days ago, it should be great. Okay, um, we have time for 
One final question, maybe as we're letting David set up. Yes. Another question, comment. I was just saying, uh, this is great work for making it frictionless. And if you want to contribute, uh, I, this is just a reminder that like, when I started writing specs in a bad way and got value out of it, I had to look up like, oh, how does this work in TLA plus work until it uh, works. I didn't use, you know, fa fancy things like, uh, you know, function mapping, etc. but I still got uh, tremendous value out of it. And uh, the morning talks also showed that people got tremendous value from simpler specs. So I think the most important message is get started, write some specs, uh, contribute it to the repository. So we get users. So we get uh, ecosystem is very important, which uh, Andrew and uh, these folks are working on supporting. Engineers really like it, but we also want to have users. So this uh, feedback uh, loop uh, works better uh, as a positive uh, spiral. Great points. Okay, well, can we get another round of applause for Andrew here?